morning. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, some of us have had our Thanksgiving yesterday, so you know we're almost all over. But uh, but it is a good weekend uh, to come together and give it. Uh, a few announcements as we begin. Um, thanks to those who brought uh, vegetables outside to add to the Thanksgiving decoration, and for the bright uh, the flowers inside to. Um, remind us of how beautiful it is as we drive through the countryside these days. Uh, this week we have um, book club on Wednesday at 7.30 and if you want a fun read, read the 100 year old man who climbed out of the window and disappeared. It is a, it's a good read and we welcome anybody that wants to join us on Zoom or in person to talk about it. Uh, Thursday is choir practice and they're always looking for new voices. Uh, people would be more than welcome to join. Friday we're having Faith Food Friendship and Fun at Rockwood um, at 6 o'clock. If you'd like to join us for supper, uh, just let us know by Wednesday so that we can plan. And if you have food considerations, we're getting pretty good at, at managing them, so let us know uh, if you need us to accommodate that. Um, Saturday will be uh, Spiritual Saturday at one o'clock at here and or on Zoom. Probably on Zoom. Okay. Uh, so get in touch with Lisa and she'll send you the materials. And if you haven't done it before, um, it does follow the guided prayer model. But if um, you're welcome to get in touch with her and she'll explain more about it. Um, next Sunday we're looking forward to having Greg Smith Young here as our anniversary speaker, and he's very excited to be joining us. His new role is growth animator for the church and helping churches um, find ways forward and finding, helping um, start new ministries, and so uh, he's going to share some of that work with us. And then we're going to be followed by uh, turkey and soup lunch, and uh, uh, there are uh, food drinks wrap up with uh, bring your largest pumpkins, your decorated pumpkins, your smallest pumpkins, your <laughs> sunflowers, and, and join in the fun. Uh, Edie's looking forward to uh, your orders for the roast beef dinner. How are we doing? Uh, 32. 32. So we're, we're looking for some more orders for October 23rd. And um, the other thing I was going to let you know is we're going to start Bible study on the 29th at 7 on Zoom. And uh, we're going to be looking at the parables of Jesus. So I have a couple of things on Tuesday nights, and so we're just going to start and not take a break in the middle. So, um, any, Bill, Bill is going to come and talk for a couple of minutes, but are there any other announcements uh, that you have this morning? Barb? Uh, just to add for next Sunday's activities for the food range wrap up, I should have included best car pumpkin as well, so I'll update the announcement, but if you could say that in Rockwood too. Okay. The best part of pumpkins are long. I, I kept seeing that in my mind's eye, so. Bill, did you want to come and talk to us now? Do you want to down there? Um, this coming Wednesday uh, will be World Food Day, or World Food Day, and um, just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what the implications are and what it means. This day is an opportunity for us to thank the producers of our food, the farmers, the food processors, and all the workers in the food industry. It's also an opportunity for us to reflect on the issues of global hunger. The last estimate is that over 800 million people worldwide are challenged by food insecurity. Food insecurity is defined as the limited or uncertain access to nutritious food. In Africa, where access to food is the most challenging in the world, one in five people are faced with uncertain access to food. Conflict and severe, severe weather continue to be the two biggest drivers of food insecurity. I've been asked uh, a few times, why should we support the efforts to address global hunger 
when people in Ontario and Canada are facing uncertain access to food? My answer, we need to do both. We can address global challenges while also addressing problems here at home. We don't need to wait until all of Canada's problems are solved before we help those facing hunger, poverty, and inequality in other parts of the world. Many countries rely on international aid agencies for help. They don't receive help from their government, they don't have access to food banks, or they don't receive welfare aid. When I was in Malawi last fall, I stayed with a family whose home and crops had been destroyed by uh, Cyclone Freddy. If it had not been uh, for food aid from the Canadian Food Grade Bank, they would have been struggling to survive. Equally important, money was provided to purchase supplies and seed for this coming year's crop. Many of our two congregations support the local food bank and also our fight against global hunger with donations to uh, our food bank's growing project. If you haven't donated to our project already, I invite you to consider doing so. So on, on Wednesday, as you sit down to dinner, I ask you to think about World Food Day and those families who do not, do not have access to adequate food. Thank you. Thanks very much. Any other announcements to share this morning? The good news, things that you're grateful for, things that you'd like to share with us. Um, I was speaking on Skype yesterday with my friend Helen. Some of you might remember her. She used to come out every once in a while. Um, she's moved back to England now, but um, we weren't even talking about church or anything, but she said, um, what a lovely community our church is and how welcoming and how important it is. And I thought that was just lovely that she remembered that and, and held us all in, in warm thoughts. And it's so true. Thanks, Kim. Thank you. Well, I'm not happy that I'll miss our service next week, but I'm happy that I'm missing it because I'm going to visit Emma. <laughs> this, this should be recognized for uh, the volunteering making apple dumplings uh, at the uh, Air Air and Fair. <laughs> very, very good apple dumplings I might add. Yes, for several Saturdays before Air and Fair, a bunch of folks get together and make apple dumplings, they're all frozen, uh, so they can just be taken out on fair days and baked. And so, my goodness, there were a bunch of us yesterday and I tried to make uh, making apple dumplings, so it was fun. Console. <laughs> That's always good to have people back close by. There's a, um, was amazing. Uh, my brother sends pictures from Goose Bay of the Northern Lights and used to send them from Cold Lake. And so every time there was a, oh, there's going to be Northern Lights, we, a couple of us would get in the car and we'd go look. And Lisa and I had this little route we worked out. And we were driving on Thursday night and Helen called and said, oh, I can see the Northern Lights from our driveway. And we're still looking, going, <laughs> um, and she's going, you have to go home, you have to go home. I couldn't, well, you're not going to see them when we get home. And we stopped in Hawksville, and it was the most amazing experience. And um, now they they're clearer in pictures. Maybe we see more. The the camera helps bring out the lights, but but we saw some pretty awesome colors. And you know, the best part for me was the roads were lined with people, and everywhere you went, there were people chattering and watching and waiting. And so it was a it was a great great evening. Other goodness. Uh, with the Northern Knights, we, we've had uh, a guest staying with us whose home is in Prince Edward County, but he's here visiting his mother. And, and we've been getting him a bed while he's here, so that he doesn't have to disrupt his mother's place and routine in Squire's Lodge. And he had never seen the Northern Knights, so we 
we were seeing them off of our back, and he took from his telephone, and yeah, like you said, it was better in a picture with the culture of that. Yeah. Kind of thing, but, but, yeah. Other, other news to share? Good news or any news? <coughs> any birthdays to celebrate? So we we'll light our candle. This is the trick, Colleen. It works when I test it, <laughs> and then I forget how to do it. <laughs> we we'll light our candle for the good news we've shared, the good news in our hearts, and the good news for whatever's happening in our lives. Let's pause and prepare our hearts to continue to worship. In the rich colors of autumn leaves and flowers and the dancing hues of the northern lights, we see the beauty of God's creation. The whispering wind and call of all these, we hear the spirit urging us to prepare for the In the scent of cinnamon and apples, pumpkin and spice, we smell the good things Creator has provided us. We sing our favorite bird in the tasty birds. Crunching in the leaves, carving pumpkins, and gathering in the last of the produce, we play, work, and enjoy the life God has given us. We come to bring thanksgiving to worship the Holy One who feeds our bodies, minds, and spirits. Let us pray. <clears throat> Giver of life in the season of harvest, we pause to give thanks for the abundance we enjoy. We pray that sharing our gratitude and worship will open our hearts to share the good news we receive from you. Amen. So, I do have to uh, remind you that if you get tired of sitting still, there are things to play with in the back corner, uh, things to draw on that you can go and pick up. Um, they were just moved from the front to the back, so I'm hoping they're easy to find back there. Um, please join in singing Voices United 227 for the fruit of all creation. <laughs>
if another hymn comes to mind that you'd like to sing, we're going to do favorite hymns this morning. So have, a, have that in mind as, you, uh, uh, as we worship together. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Generous God, forgive us when anxious about the future, we hold on to more than we need, just in case. Inspire us with the vision of your kingdom to be generous with others. Gracious God, hear our silent prayers as we confess those things that separate us from you and from each other. Friends, hear the good news. God who created us is always with us. Whatever is going on in our life, God is there. God loves us and forgives us. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading uh, Matthew 6, verses 25 to 33. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, about your body, what you will wear. It's not life more than food and body and clothing. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? And which of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your span of life? And why are you worried about the Lord? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow, so in the other, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who seek all these things, and indeed your Heavenly Father knows so much we need all these things. <clears throat> but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. May God bless this reading to our understanding and our faithful living. Amen. Please join in singing hymn number 510. We plow the field. It's not actually 520. 520. It is. We caught that in one place, but not there. <laughs>
thank you, Liz. Oh. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth, the thoughts of our minds, and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. We pause this weekend to give thanks. Many of us gather with family and friends to celebrate the harvest and the abundance <coughs> we enjoy. Even as we recognize that many people in our community and around the world do not have the good things we have. This was the time that, especially when we were doing children's time, we always went back to history and where did Thanksgiving start anyway? And, and I don't know about you, but I always see the little kids in pilgrim costumes and how the uh, American Thanksgiving dominated ours because of those pictures, I think. But uh, looking back, it's in Canada, it originated like in, in the United States with the colonial period. The Europeans arriving and being grateful for their safe journey and for peace and for bountiful harvest. Uh, the earliest note we have in Canada uh, goes back to 1578 when Martin Frobisher settled uh, in present day Nineveh area and gave thanks for, for their safe arrival of their fleet. It was 1879 that Parliament established a National Thanksgiving Day on November 6th, which I had remembered. And uh, that date varied, and eventually with Remembrance Day, they decided to move it. And so on January 31st, 1957, the Governor General of Canada, Vincent Massey, issued a proclamation stating, a day of general thanksgiving to Almighty God for the bountiful harvest with which Canada has been blessed to be observed on the second Monday in October. So most Canadians will celebrate Thanksgiving this weekend though, with family gatherings and traditions, community events, air and fall fair. We heard all the uh, apple dumplings that Liz was part of making and um, people showing sheep and cattle. And, and uh, we, we know that it's important to a lot of people, but as people of faith, our Thanksgiving begins here. It's in offering thanks to God who gave us life and offers us new life in Christ. When Jesus was offering this teaching, he it's part of the Sermon on the Mount, but, but the people that are studying more are pretty sure that this was a teaching he offered to his disciples and his close followers, to, to the insiders, because he was wanting them to understand what the kingdom of heaven was like, what they would be working for as his followers. So he, he really wanted them to have this special understanding. So when he saw people being anxious, anxious about what they would eat, what they would drink, what they would wear, he knew that that anxiety contributed to the challenges in society and the, the separation of people. So if I'm anxious about what I, my family's going to eat, I'm going to keep more for myself. If, if I'm unsure that I'm going to have enough for my family, I, I'm going to struggle with people that are around me that are needing help. I'm going to keep my distance. I'm going to fight with people who have different traditions, different religions, because I want to protect my own, because I'm anxious. Now, the people that he was speaking to might not have been worrying about global warming and fires and floods and hurricanes, war in the Ukraine or the Middle East, the shooting in a Jewish girls' school in Toronto, who's going to be the next president, who's going to be the next prime minister, how much food costs have gone up, or whether our pension checks will stretch to cover fuel and rent and mortgage and all the things that seem to be more expensive, the other things that are part of our daily concerns. But those folks had the worries of their time, their place, the weather impacting their crops. Would they have enough harvest left to pay all the taxes that they had to pay, to pay the temple tax and the tax to the Romans? Would the catch of fish be enough to feed their family and meet the taxes? Would they, how can they manage with this Roman presence there all the time, soldiers having to watch what you said, wondering if you were going to be the next person that was going to be convicted of disobeying the rule of the Romans. Jesus wasn't saying those things don't matter, they're not there, they're not real, you, you guys just smile and be happy. He definitely wouldn't want us to dismiss people's worries, to say, well, we really have it so good in Canada, you know, 
well, you've got to think of those people in refugee camps. Does it doesn't matter that you're you're living on the street here, or doesn't matter that your anxieties aren't letting you out of bed. He's not saying these things aren't real. He's not offering pat answers. He's not. Uh, as I was speaking at Sewn, I was remembering. Uh, we talk about um, the prosperity gospel, that if you just pray and do the right thing, you're going to be wealthy and to have, and it's a great way to just justify your wealth, right? Well, God's blessed me. But there was a time where the prayer of Jabez came out, and I, I have to go and search it in, in scripture, but there's about four lines, the Jabez story and what he said. And people turned that into books and to all sorts of things. If you would just pray that prayer every day, you would be wealthy. You would have all that you need. That is not what Jesus is talking about. And he's not talking about going home and sitting down at your table and saying, well, I, I don't have to take in the crop. I, I don't have to go to work because God's going to provide for me. Everything's going to be there. Look, he provides for the birds. I think the birds went out and got that seed. Um, but what he's saying, what he's inviting us and his followers to do is to look to God first, to see life through the lens of God, and to trust that God will provide for us as we come together in community and care for one another and see the vision of the kingdom. When we come here as community, we share those old stories of scripture, and we hear what God did for the people in the past, at least how they interpreted what God did for them in the past. The stories are really interesting. Whether you worry about whether water really came out of a rock or didn't come out of a rock, what you see in that story of the Israelites coming from Egypt to the Promised Land is you see that when they put God first, when they focused on God's will for the world, God's possibilities, they found food. They found water. The bitter water was turned sweet. And when they forgot about God, and when they complained that they'd rather be back in Egypt, they didn't have enough. And they struggled with each other, and they struggled with Moses. And so Jesus is saying to us, put God first. Look through and see through God's eyes. Come together as community and support one another. When you have good times, share them with one another. When you have challenging times, support one another. Talk to each other about how you've gotten through something. It's in those kinds of conversations that we feel God's love and care for each other. It's those kinds of conversations that teach us not to just look at one another and to take care of each other, but to look out and see if we can make a difference in the world. At Stone this morning, uh, Bill reminded us that Wednesday is World Food Day. It's the day that we think of all the people around the world who are hungry and how we can help them. And, and we help in different ways. So Stone is offering a food grains project and inviting folks to contribute that. And he reminded us that when he was in Malawi, the people had just been through a, a storm and everything had been destroyed. And what they had to eat was from the food grains bank. That was all they had. So while we do want to support East Wellington here and we want to make a difference in our communities, sometimes all other people have is what we're willing to give. And I look at Ellen and I think of she and Ray supporting Cher and, and that work that's being done and others uh, doing in different ways, but all about recognizing that we have enough and we can reach out and give more. And it's backed up by science, right? Because you on line, the scientists say there is enough food for everybody in the world. The problem is um, how we, the efficiency was the word. I was surprised at that, but efficiency. 30% is lost in um, shipping and storage. It just doesn't get out there. And then of the other 60%, 30, 70%, um, we know that there are people that hold on to it so they can get a higher price. People that keep it because they give it to free for those people, they'd rather throw it in the garbage than to give it to somebody because that will cut my profit margin. We know that if we do it together, that God created a world that has enough for everybody. And that if we give in to fear, then out of scarcity we hold back keep it for ourselves, for people like us 
for our country, but Jesus longs for us to trust that God has given enough and is in caring and reaching out for others that we will have the kind of kingdom that God intended where everyone has enough. The history of the American and Canadian Thanksgiving included stories of interactions with the First Nations. We, we heard how the first settlers struggled because of the weather, because of different food, because of all the conveniences that they no longer had, and it was the First Nations that taught them and helped them to survive. But the story didn't end there. There were, there were wampum belts, belts that had two uh, peoples walking side by side down a long path. There were treaties, but they weren't honored. And now we're still struggling to undo the harm that had been done in that time. So I'm going to ask you in a little while to share our, our conversation is going to be our prayer. I'm going to ask you to think of things that you're grateful for or to, to share a, a Thanksgiving tradition. What I find myself so grateful for is the connection that we made with Stephen Jackson, Tammy Webster, and Anishinaabeg Outreach. I, I still see Kay and Marcia and Liz and I sitting with them that first time over six years ago and talking about what Stephen imagined and what the possibilities were. And when I, when I hear him and when I see what he's done, I see somebody that shares the same vision that we have, just a different way of who is behind it. I mean, the vision of the kingdom is what Stephen is talking about. A place where people aren't given a handout, but they're given the things in life that will get them a hand up so that they can have their own dignity, their own care for their family, and care, be able to care for the people around them. We, uh, Case and Aria and Rick, my brother and I, went to um, Anishinaabeg Reconciliation Garden on September 30th, and some of you I've told you about it, but I think it's a, it's a story that I need to tell again. Um, it it's, was so important. And we got there, and there's, of course, the food forest that they developed working with um, another community group, of which I don't know the name of, but that's put, been putting them around the region. And behind the community forest, there's beehives. There's somebody who's started beehives. And if you see pictures, there's more hives than are there because Stephen's got those going out to people because that can be a business that they can begin to, to work into agriculture. Um, it's an easy way to start. And, and all around are shovels and bags of topsoil and trees and people. And nobody's giving direction, nobody's saying, you will go here and you will dig this deep and you will this and you will, don't do it that way. You, people were just wandering around and gleaning information from each other. There was a bag of topsoil there, so it must go with the tree. And somebody would say, well, you're supposed to go, what is it, down the depth and too wide um, and, and put some topsoil on the bottom and mix some in the middle and put some on the top. And, and uh, so Rick and I were wandering around and we found Jessica and Jessica was digging and we said, well, you know, you've been working pretty hard at that. Let us help dig the hole. So we dug the hole and we talked about what we'd been hearing. And so we did our best approximation and, and then somebody brought uh, mulch and, and so we put some mulch around and they left a little circle in the center so that it would kind of hold the water. And, and then we went and fixed some mulch around some of the other trees. And, and then Rick and I wandered to the back and we found some more cedar trees that needed to be planted. And, and we started digging and Jessica Jessica came and joined us, and we got it just about in the ground, and I heard, that's not straight. <laughs> Guess who that was? <laughs> so we planted with Case, and he taught us a little more about planting, and I think it was fine. He was just having some good fun, but, uh, but we planted together, and then there were these pallets and pallets of bags of something, and uh, I was like, what are they going to do with that? Like, the trees are all planted, people are kind of wandering around, and all of a sudden, they took the wrapping off. 900 bags of mulch and people picked it up in wheelbarrows and they picked it up in their hands and they carried it over and they spread it in the food forest and and some people were spreading and I ended up picking up bags and you know somebody opened one and, and then Case realized that people were wrestling so he took his knife and he's cutting the bags open and and it was all spread I don't know 30 minutes tops like Mulching is a wonderful experience. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially with all those people. I mean, it was amazing. It was really, really a gift. 
And, uh, and then, um, so the mulch came from Scott's, you know, uh, Stephen makes partners everywhere, and then Home Depot provided us with lunch, and then we listened to Stephen talk. And I've shared some of this with you before, but I've never really, my understanding in the beginning was that he, they've developed this cloud-based learning management system called AO Nest, cloud-based learning management system. And I understood it was for First Notions folks. I didn't realize that we could access it as well. But it started with a partnership with Tech to set up this website and partnering with people. So they, if you go, there's a little video you can click on and see what it's about. And it starts with museum. So they're making a virtual museum. So things like pipes from indigenous people and so on will be there and people can go and look at them and read about them. And, and then they have language learning, so you can learn in Anishinaabeg. They've got teachings, um, indigenous teachings for indigenous people, but for others to come and, and learn. Um, there's cooking, how to cook. There's uh, how to teach baseball with the help of the Toronto Blue Jays. There's how to become a royal bank teller from Royal Bank. I've told you about that before, but there's skills for business. There's how to make maple syrup, like traditional learnings. So this huge body of knowledge that's just out there for people, I think, to register. That's next week's project to see, do I get to register? Um, and, you know, but what it reads as, this is for everyone to help us to share knowledge and to, to learn together and grow. Well, Stephen um, began and with his talk with telling us that they've, they've begun something new with with AO Nest, and they've partnered with Mental Health from York Region and others. And what they're doing, he said, you know, the, I don't remember the number of Indigenous people. I wish I could remember it, but he gave he gave a number, and he said, if all those people in Canada had one hour of therapy, we would need was it a hundred thousand? Was it a million? I I don't know. It was somewhere between those two. We we'll need that many hours, and one hour of therapy isn't enough for anybody. And there aren't enough therapists even to do one hour. There's not enough money to pay for that. And people need a lot more than one hour therapy to, to help them find who they are, to set behind the things they need to set behind. And so in AO Nest, they've put together a series of health and wellness videos. And lots of other people are doing it too, I know. But this is intentionally given for free. It's not an add-on to the insurance that we pay for. It's intentionally given for free so that people can come and be restored, find their own healing. So instead of somebody telling you what to do is the description on online, it's therapists asking questions to help you find where you need to heal. And they have places where you can look about addictions and trauma and bullying and gender-based violence, and there's yoga for seniors if you want a yoga program, and there's anger management, and it's all done so that people can go in and find what they need at their pace and to find the kind of healing and wellness. We, Jessica, we asked, so, you know, what do you do? And she is doing social work, and she connected through a neighborhood group to Stephen, and so she's working part-time in social work and doing part-time other things. And so she became a part of the grief section of this, for setting up a grief section so people that aren't able to go to hospice, which has a wonderful program, but maybe you can't drive there or, or aren't able for other reasons, have a place to go. And it's partnering, right? He's always partnering. So when I said, this is my brother from the armed forces, he says, we need to partner with you because you have a problem in the armed forces. And, and uh, he, he wants this to be out there to make a difference for everybody. Isn't that the vision of the kingdom? The place where we share what we have, where people have enough, where people find work, build good relationships, find help and wellness. We have so much to be thankful. And I am so grateful that out of your faithfulness, we've been able to partner with AO and to make connections that will help towards healing and reconciliation and will help us move towards that place God envisions 
where all people will have full lives and have enough. May it be so. Amen. The choir is going to sing. Thanksgiving memory. Uh, we would uh, celebrate our gratitude and thankfulness this morning by sharing these. Um, and as you're thinking, um, I'm, I'm going to uh, do our offering time. Um, I was walking in the building this morning and at the council meeting, Brian and I were commissioned to send another stewardship letter out to let people know um, how valuable your gifts are what a difference they make for us who are gathered here, but for those that we reach out to in the community and wider. And I came in with some words in mind, but you take notes because we need to write this. Um, remember, we'll start off by inviting friends. Remember when you were at Stone, what did you enjoy? What was a gift? Last Christmas when we had those wandering young people that came and joined us, the worship committee said, how do we get on their list again? Um, that wonderful gift of 12 extra voices that were singing with us. Let you know about here and now. Uh, somebody took down our rainbows. I'm missing the rainbows in the window. Did they fall? <laughs> Um, they, we've had, uh, but we celebrated becoming affirming. We had this amazing celebration, and, and we're looking for signs of ways to to let people outside know that this is a safe place for all people. That that's the here. That's what's happening now. And we are imagining with our harvest table and food for the whole community. For with our wellness series, we're imagining 
in the future, reaching out and making a difference. And we need people's support to do that. We know we have yours. And so when you get that letter, that letter's not saying, your people need to, it's saying, thank you for being a part of this. And we want to invite those folks that aren't a part of it right now to, to join in with us again and be who God wants us to be in this place. So we've got a preview of the letter. Thank you for all you give in so many ways. And we thank God for the good things that we have. And now, what are you grateful for? This sounds weird. Um, just having family meal together. So, because in Britain, Thanksgiving is harvest home, and we may celebrate in the church, but there's no special meal, there's no holiday. So when we came here, this was, it was funny. Lots of traditions we didn't adopt with alacrity, but this one has no problem. A pumpkin <laughs> pie is, you know, get turkey is negotiable, because I don't like turkey, we, but pumpkin in, pie in is In Britain, we don't celebrate the American War of Independence. Chris and I went to work on Victoria Day the first year we were here. It's <laughs> not a whole day. <laughs> but we, we got the message by Thanksgiving. We know now. Scott Day is still surprises. Anyway, get on with it. That's what I'm going Me? Yes, yes. I don't know if you want to hear what I think. What are you thankful for? Well, I'm thankful for. Um, genetic engineering and our knowledge of genetic engineering which allows us to make something like 30% of the food to be grown and to feed people in the world, like 2 billion people or something like that. I'm thankful for modern agricultural science, mechanisation, transportation, refrigeration, veterinary science and everybody who works with all of that because that's what feeds us today. And I don't agree with what you described, which is the trust the awesomeness doctrine, because... Oh, but you um, see, we believe that all of what you're saying is part of trust. Yeah, I know you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they, you know. I know, I know. I believe that. <laughs> I'll keep it short. Uh, I'm thankful that I can have my family all together today for, for dinner. Um, just... Uh, small gathering this year but um, just the four of us so Angie's making turkey today so we're, I'm thankful for that and I'm also thankful for my job I really enjoy teaching and um, all of that um, it's a very rewarding career and I'm, I'm thankful for that uh, I'm just thankful for um, uh, a lot of what um, people have said, but like the bounty, the um, um, huge bounty of food that we enjoy, but that other people can't, a lot of like other people can't enjoy because of the food, the, the huge serious issue of food insecurity, and it seems to not be getting any better. It, it's um, something like the, the issue of homelessness. It's like increasing now more so, more and more, let alone year by year, but even month by month it seems. So we're, we're very fortunate to, uh, to be in, our, in a situation that we can enjoy the amount of food we do. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> I'm just grateful to be here. <laughs> Earlier this year when I was diagnosed with colon cancer, I had no idea what my future was going to be at that time. No treatment. I have another um, appointment, so I'm so thankful for the medical doctors that referred me from here to here to here to there. <laughs> frankly just overwhelmed when I think what what in the world am I thankful for because from the minute I wake up in the morning till turning in at night there's not a thing <clears throat> that I experience that doesn't give joy or give something 
and there, there, there are the, the negative things out there, but I try to teach myself to stay away from those, except to accept that they're there and what can be done about it. I, I'm just thankful, frankly, for getting up in the morning. I think I'm most uh, thankful for the, the safety of where we live when we compare ourselves to other areas in the world and, and that we are able to be um, the ones providing food and, and support to other areas instead of being the ones who have to, to receive it, whether it's in our communities or in, in other countries. And I'm thankful for, um, in these last few years, I've had some trying times and I've had family and friends um, there to support me and um, it keeps me strong. And um, so last night we had our uh, Thanksgiving dinner at my son's place in um, Erin and um, to have family there and ask me to do a blessing is really something special because my family does not do church and such. But they paused and said, Grandma, would you like to say grace? And to me, that was a real pleasure. And um, at the same time, there was a bounty of food, just like you said, there um, so much that um, my son said, and mom, would you like the turkey leg? Because you all know the story about the turkey leg. <laughs> so this is remembering Lou, the turkey leg, and to me, that was a blessing too. Awesome. Hi, I was just going to say after our Today, I am really grateful for all our faithful farm members who turn up week after week after week. And, and oh, I can't tell you how grateful I am for Heather on the keyboards because if I was playing, it would not be nearly as good. What Barb really meant to say, though, was she was grateful for the choir members who turn up week after week after week late. <laughs>
Yes, um, I remember the very first uh, Thanksgiving that I, when I came to Canada 75 years ago as an 18-year-old and uh, uh, how, what a feast they put in front of me. I wasn't aware of the kind of foods that people had and I was so thankful that someone actually cared enough to bring a foreigner in. So, uh, you know, it, life is strange, and today I will be celebrating with my extended family. It is also at the same time my eldest daughter's 70th birthday, so uh, it's double celebration, shall we say. So, yes, we, we celebrate all the good that we can give and receive in this land of plenty. Thank you, Elsa. Let us continue our prayer. God, we have been gifted with this community and with our churches of stone and rockwood. We ask your blessing on each person gathered here and those who can't be with us. We pray by name for Bet, Ben, Bill, Connie, Charlene, Donna, Deborah, Doug and Virginia, Evelyn, Grace, Harry, Heather, Joan, Kathy, Ken, Linda, Mabel, Mary, Mary, Mike, Paul, Ryan, Sebastian, Sandy, Sarah, Tammy, Fanny, Wendy, Werner, and Victoria. God, 
we lift up to you the prayers of gratitude that we have spoken, the prayers in our hearts, and we trust that you answer our prayers in spoken and unspoken in your mouth. We pray, close our prayer with the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power of our Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is from War Voices 182, Grateful. Go into this day with your hearts full of gratitude for all God has given us. And the vision that if we share what we have, there will be enough for all, and God's kingdom will come. Go now in the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, this day and always. Amen. Amen.